Hi there, this is Rick. I recently completed a couple of repair scripts, one for AI and one for players. The player repair script can be used irrespective of whether you're an engineer or whether you have a toolkit in your backpack. So any player can use it. I'm going to explain now how to integrate that into persistent mission like liberation. Obviously this is just one method, there are many methods of doing it, but this is the method I would recommend. We've been using and testing the vehicle repair liberation script for over two months now with our group and uh, haven't seen any issues. Uh, it seems stable and robust. Liberation, if you haven't played it before, then uh, strongly recommend you do. It's certainly one of the best persistent missions there is for Armour 3. You'll find a lot of missions on a Steam Workshop. You'll need probably four or five players to join you. If you want to build in a, a repair script, I'm distributing it on the Steam Workshop. And if you want to know more about it, just have a look at the end of this video. You'll see a link to the video explaining how the repair script works and um, the actual script itself. There are liberation missions for a multiple number of maps like Al Rayak, Altus, Chonaris, Winter, Livonia, Lithium, Molden, and so on and so on. So there's a, there's a hell of a lot of missions out there. Missions typically take days to even weeks depending on how many players you have. It's persistent, the server saves the state of the game so you never lose your game state. I'll just read you a quick overview, just basically experience a massive capture the island campaign involving large range, different settlements across the entire area, cooperative with up to 34 player support, including commanding role, two fire team squads, a medevac, logistical support squad, as well as AI recruits to fill the gaps. Uh, you can purchase infantry, ground and air vehicles using different types of physical resources, supplies, ammunition and fuel. And those resources you use to build forward operation bases. If you kill civilians, you can get punished. The AI are particularly uh, intelligent, in inverted commas. They will outflank you. They'll detect weaknesses in your strategy and uh, often try to take, take your base, your operations base. Anyway, Capu Liberation, fantastic. If you haven't played it, you should, definitely should. Okay, so now I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process to integrate the script into any Liberation mission. Just a little bit of information on how the repair process is called in the game. It makes use of an add action. And typically, if you're creating a, a relatively small-scale mission, you would place the add action that I've highlighted over here and put that into init, init player local.sqf and on player respawn.sqf files in your mission root folder. But because liberation is a complex system, we're not going to use those uh, this particular method. The first thing you need to do is obviously get a liberation mission and the way you do that is by subscribing to a mission on the Steam Workshop. And once your mission has been downloaded, you need to find it. So if you go to this folder, go to the Steam asset folder, you'll find it under C program files, x86 Steam user data, uh, your Steam account ID, user generated content, UGC referenced, and then you'll see a lot of folders with long numbers. Those folders contain the actual mission that you're looking for. Okay, so I've got the, I've downloaded this file and I've found it in my reference folder. So now I need to unpack it. And the way to unpack it is you need a PBO manager. You can get a PBO manager from Armaholic. I use PBO manager. It's very sort of easy to use and uh, it does what it needs to do. So you install it. Once you've installed it, it associates PBO files with the executable. Right click on it, PBO manager, extract the last one, extract two, and it out pops the folder with all the assets. Open the folder. Okay, so now let's have a look at the ROS repair script and see exactly what we need to do. All right, in ROS repair, we have images, scripts, sound, description.ext, and these are sample files for you to use to make your life a little bit easier when trying to install it. 
Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to copy some sound files across. You'll notice that there are eight sound files. These files are used during the repair loop while the unit is repairing the vehicle. There's a repair script, which is the one we're going to be using for players. There's some classes we need to define. And then we need to find a mechanism of calling this add action or placing this add action on the player every time he respawns. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the classes from the description.ext sample file in ROS repair demo under ROS repair. And we're going to go into your user interface. We're going to go to liberation titles. And at the top, you'll see a class CFG sounds. So what we do is we paste those classes in. Now, importantly, if you look at the liberation folder structure, you'll notice that they have a folder called sounds. Okay. Sometimes you won't, there may not be a sound folder, but if it is, make sure that the path, pathing in the CFG sounds class is correct. You'll see that ROS repair refers to a, a, a path ROS repair slash sound. Uh, in this case, we're actually going to be, we put the sound, we're going to put the sound files in here. So we'll change these parts to sounds. Okay, so we save it. Okay, so our sound classes are defined. We now need to copy the sound files. So we grab all the sound files, copy them, and paste them in here. Okay, so now we've done, we've set up sound. Now we need to do scripts. So we go into the scripts folder in the ROS uh, repair, and we take the ROS repair file and copy it over. If there were a substantial number of interdependent scripts um, and this was like a massive mod or whatever, then obviously I'd create a separate folder. But for this, it's just a single file, so it's not really necessary. So now we've copied the script across. Now we still need a method of calling the um, add action or placing the add action onto the player. So what we do is we go into client under KP Liberation, go to actions. And we go to Action Manager. We need to add a private variable for repair. So we'll just put it over here. What you need to type in is private, declare the variable, and assign a value to it. So this line needs to be added into the top of the Action Manager. Once you've declared this variable, you need to scroll all the way down. You'll notice that all these add actions run in a while true loop. So when you get to the bottom, you need to add the following script. And what this does is it cross checks whether the player is alive and whether he's in a vehicle. If that's true, then it checks to see if I dact repair is equal to minus one, essentially meaning that that IDAC repair does not have anything associated with it, or that the variable does not contain an action. And then what it does is it assigns the add action from the header text that I showed you from the repair script, and assigns that to the variable IDAC repair. If the player is not alive or is in a vehicle, 
it checks to see if IDAC repair is not equal to minus one. And if it isn't equal to minus one, then it removes the action off the player and it then assigns minus one to IDAC repair and then it keeps repeating this loop over and over again. Save the file, close it. Go back to your liberation mission. So now we've added the sound classes, we've added the sound files, we've added the script and we've found a method to call the add action in the script. So we close this packet using PBO manager. And there's our new PBO. Place this PBO file in your multiplayer missions folder under Armour 3. Start up your server, load this mission in, and you're good to go. I hope that was useful. If you have any queries, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this content and are new to this channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you can get notified when we release new content. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.